Hello everyone and welcome. On this episode of Future Shop, we are going to be tackling some problems on our game. We are going to be fixing some bugs and introducing a new feature to create characters. So if you want to know how that's done, let's get started. So right now we have this available characters list here on our inspector. However, I'm not really fancy of that. I think it worked for the time being and it's time for us to now create the characters in code and that will help us later on when we try to import characters from a server or from a file. And in order for us to do that we are going to be creating a character constructor. And to do that you go public character open and close brackets. And this is a constructor. This will create a new character. However, we can pass in arguments, such as the name. So we go string name. And this will allow us to create a character with a certain name. And we can pass the name to the character using the constructor. And for us to do that, we go this.name, which is the variable that we declared up in the top is equals to the name and this will create a character with a certain name and we can go ahead and create other arguments such as the health, the attack, the defense and if the character is locked or not and with those arguments in place we can go ahead and insert them in the variables that we created earlier so we can go this.health is equals to health this.maxhealth is equals to health and we do this because we want the character health and max health to be the same whenever we are creating a character so this.attack is equals to the attack and this.defense is equals to defense and let's not forget this dot is locked is equals to is locked and this is the constructor done now we can go ahead and go to the character controller and create a new character so we go character ch is equals to a new character and we can pass in the arguments such as the name the health the attack the defense and if the character is locked or not and this is the way we are going to be creating characters from now on via code. So now let's delete this available character list because this is the new way we are going to be creating characters and with that done we can go ahead and comment all this code and let's create a new method for creating a character so void create character and the argument is a character C and now instead of us holding the reference to the character in the variable we can simply go create character and pass in the new character well inside that method we are going to be instantiating the game object and if we now jump into unity and we r wait for it to recompile and run the game you can see that we have one character and the values of this character are all wrong because we are not displaying the correct ones but let's worry about that later what we want is now a dictionary and let's go public dictionary and we want a dictionary of characters that relate to game objects so we go character comma game object and we can call this the character to game object map because what this is going to be doing is relating a character model to a game object in game so if we that will allow us to do something like hey I want to change the health of this particular character and if we have a relation to a game object in game we can simply tell it, hey, this character lost health, get, grab its visual and change its health or anything else. 
So now we can instantiate this character to game object map. And we do that by going character game object map is equals to a new dictionary of character to game object. And now we need to add the character and the game object that relates to that character to this dictionary. And we do this by going into the new function that we created and going character game object map dot add and then we add the character C and the game object in this case C go. And this will add a character model and a visual representation of that character to this dictionary. So now it's time for us to work on the visuals. So let's go ahead and create a folder inside the scripts and call it display. And inside that display folder, let's create a C sharp script called character display. And this script needs to be added to the prefab of the character container because this script is responsible for displaying everything that has to do with the characters. So now let's go ahead and jump into the Visual Studio and let's delete everything inside the character display and let's create a new variable. And this variable is going to be of type public and it's going to be a character. And this is the character that this character display is going to be displaying things for. We also need some variables for the text and because we need the variables for text we need to be using unity engine.ui and this text variable is going to be for the name so let's call it name text we need a public text for the attack te text we need a public text for the defense text and I forgot the health text so let's go public text health text also we need an another variable a public image for the is locked image the little padlock so with that in place you can see whenever this reloads that now we have those variables in the inspector so we need to populate them with the according game objects in game so to do that we are going to be adding this prefab to its position in game like this and we are going to be filling it with the appropriate text and images so let's just simply drag this and the attack and the defense now let's apply the changes to the prefab we can delete it because we no longer need it and we create the void start method and this will run on start so on start we want the name text to be equals to the character dot name and it's not name text is name text dot text and we can come here into the character controller and copy this other these other changes that we are going to do with the health, the attack and the defense. And let's just change this with the appropriate variables. So attack text and defense text. And because we are using character instead of C, let's just go ahead and change the C to character. And this is going to be changing all the values with the character values. We also need to tell the display if we want to display the lock or not. So let's go is locked image dot game object dot set active is equals open and closing brackets to the character is locked. And this will display the lock if the character is locked and will not if the character isn't locked. So now all we have to do in order for us to see that is go C game object dot get component of type character display. So we are going to get that script and then dot character 
is equals to C and this will assign the character to that display script to be the C. Now if we go ahead and go back to Unity, wait for it to recompile and run the game, you can see that all the stats are correct. And if we go back to Visual Studio, we duplicate this line and change the name of the characters to something like John Doe, for instance, and we run the game again, you can see that we have two characters, one called Stereo PT and the other one called John Doe. But we have a problem. If we click both of them, nothing happens. So let's fix that. And to fix that, we can use the code that's right here. We can go ahead and copy this if statement. So if the character is not locked, we can copy this and paste it down here in the create character. So we no longer need to display the lock, so we can get rid of those lines. And we can go game object get component button and add the appropriate function. So this means we no longer need all this commented code. And now if we jump into Unity, wait for it to recompile and run the game, if we click a character you can see that everything works as it should. So we just change all the code to be more oriented in the script instead of being in the inspector. We are going to do the same with both the jobs and the items, but I will work on that later. And it looks like we are way past the wrapping up point for today's episode. So today we created a new way for us to create characters. We can now create them in code instead of in the inspector and this will help us going forward. Now, we want to do the same thing we did with the character and we want to do that with both the jobs and the items. And that is what we are going to be doing on the next episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed this bug fixing episode. The next one we will do mostly the same, optimizing code and such. And if you did like this episode, leave it a like, comment on it if you have any doubts about what's happening in this episode, subscribe to the channel for more videos and I will see you on the next one.